Hi guys and welcome to this a video for the general maths course on types of data. Yes, it is fabulous to see you here. My name is Darren, maths guru, and it is my job to try and make maths as interesting and as entertaining and as helpful as I possibly can, and also easy. I hate people who think maths are hard. I know that's you, but trust me, it really isn't. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's a big fat trick. Now, if you haven't already done so, can you subscribe to my YouTube channel? Never going to be rich and I'm never going to be famous, but uh, just every time that someone subscribes, I just know that you're watching and that makes this whole video recording worthwhile. And then there's mathsguru.com where you can actually head over there. The videos are organized with time codes and downloadable notes and uh, exam questions and, and they're all tied to a textbook and it's freaking awesome if I do say so myself. And it's absolutely free to sign up. So head over there as well. What are we doing today? Well, our learning objective is to understand what data is and how it can be categorized. We're going to look at what a variable is and also a constant. And then we're going to look at the idea of what categorical data is and what numerical data is as well. And each of those can be then subdivided. Sound confusing? Promise you it really, really isn't. Now, why is this important? Because the Further Maths Units 3 and 4 course builds on this stuff. If you smash this course, you are going to be so well set up or so set up for next year, you're, it's not going to be funny. Yeah, Chapters 1 to 6 of the Further Maths Unit 3 and 4 textbook basically is all data. So this stuff, way, way, way important. And if you don't understand it, you can replay the videos, ask for extra help, send me an email. I'll do what I can to clarify stuff if I can. I'm here to help. So what is data? Well, information is data and it is all around us. Everywhere we look, we're seeing data. But I'm going to sort of narrow it down for just what we're doing with general maths. And let's imagine a survey has been created. I've taken four people randomly off the street. I know, that's weird. And I've asked them four questions. I've asked them sex. Mm, that's a little unpleasant, but moving on. I mean gender. Yes, coffee size, we are looking at number of brothers. Don't know why we didn't ask sisters. Mm -hmm. And hand span, which is the difference between that section there and that section there. Why? Have no idea. Four of the most random things to ask. But what it is going to highlight is the difference between the types of data that we can have. So if you look here, we've got this column here with M's and F's. This here with large and smalls. This here has some numbers, but they seem to be whole numbers. And those numbers there have decimal places. And each of those types of things are really, really important to us, believe it or not. Okay, so let's have a look. Two types of data. We have categorical data and numerical data. Let's look at categorical data first, which is things like eye color and coffee size and gender. These are data items that have words to describe them. Now, it's a little bit weird because, for example, if I have up to 50, which is an example coming up in a later video, that is categorical data. Yes, it has a number in it, but the fact that it's got up to 50 makes it categorical. It's got those words in it. My responses of male and female, large and small, categorical data. Another way to think about this is you can't find the average of a gender. You can't say, well, what's the average of male and female? It doesn't make any sense, right? And if you've got any answer to that question, keep them to yourself because you get slapped. Yeah? What's the average of large and small? Now, you might turn around and say, well, medium. Yeah? And again, that will describe a part of data to us in a short while, right? So looking at the data, we can see the categorical data then. So the categories we have in here would be sex and coffee size. Why? Because those are the ones with words. Now, M and F, you're saying, oh, it's just a letter. Yes, it is, but M stands for male and F stands for female, right? So that's categorical data, things with words in it. Now, to make things even more interesting, we can narrow down categorical data to have subcategories. And they are nominal, which begins with N-O, and ordinal, which begins with ORD. Hold on a moment, ORD sounds like order, or it begins with the same things as order. Now, in that sense, there are certain words that we can use that almost imply that there is an order, that we can put them in some sort of order. So, for example, small, medium, and large. Those words there have an implied order. We've made the English language and we've given those words some idea of size. So, small, we would know is that, medium, and large job done. Yes, so that there is ordinal data, something we can put in order. But what about male and female? Is that ordinal? Are males more important than females? Careful, 
Are females more important than males? Well, Beyonce seems to think so because they're going to run the world. And trust me, that's more than likely. And go, girl, go, girl. But the point of it is, male and female, you can't put in an order. So that is nominal, which starts with no. And I like to think of that as no order, all right? So nominal means no order. So you're going to have to keep these. Now, there are tricks to this. And unfortunately, there are stupid ones as well. So believe it or not, postcodes. If I look at, I don't know, the postcode of when I used to work in the city, 3001, believe it or not, postcodes are categorical. And you're going to say, well, hold on a moment, they've got numbers in them. Yes, they've got numbers, but that's just because that's what we called them. All right? For some reason, we've chosen numbers to stand for, um, but you can't have an average postcode. And I suppose in that sense, that will help you work out whether it's categorical or numerical. You can't have an average postcode. It doesn't make any sense. And also, believe it or not, it is nominal. Now, you're going to say, but postcodes and go up and they don't. If you look at a map of postcodes, there is no sequence to the way the postcodes go up, right? So you can't actually order postcodes. And there are others, believe it or not, and I'm going to come to one in a moment. So the flip side of this is numerical data, right? And this is data that can be measured or counted. So when I say measure, things like height and weight and time. These things, so height and weight and time, can have decimal value answers. And they can be decimals to infinity and beyond. Why? Well, because we only round them to the level of the accuracy that we like. A stopwatch is normally to a thousandths. Um, the same bolt will actually have stuff that will allow you to go much uh, to another decimal place. I think three decimal places, I don't know. Height, weight, these are all type of things. But again, numbers of brothers and sisters, whole number values, you're not going to have 1.4 brothers. I mean, you might. You might have a leg and an arm just lying around. Hopefully, if you have, don't let me know. And please, please, please phone the police. Just let them know your brother's no longer around. But things like numbers of brothers and numbers of eggs and number of people, these are whole number of values. Right? So this is numerical data. And in this situation here, there we go, ladies and gentlemen, those two columns hold my numerical data. But guess what? Yes, numerical data can also be split into two categories as well. There is a discrete and there is continuous. Now, sadly, guys, I haven't yet thought of a good and entertaining way to make this <laughs> tie into the data. So if you've got one, let me know. Leave a comment below. Really, really appreciate it. But what is discrete data? Well, basically, discrete data takes whole number values. Now, again, I don't particularly like that because, believe it or not, shoe sizes are also discrete data. And you're going to say, well, hold on a moment. Shoe sizes have 7.5. They do, but again, that's not a decimal number in the sense of we could have a 7.5132 shoe. For some reason, someone's just said, oh, we need a shoe size between 7 and 8, and we'll call it a 7.5. But it's you cannot get a 7.3 shoe. You cannot get a 7.8 shoe. So in that situation, shoe sizes are discrete data, right? Because there's not a decimal representation. Continuous, on the other hand, is the data that can be rounded to a certain or as many decimal points as we can with the equipment that we've got. So in this situation here, number of brothers would be discrete data. Why? Because again, you can't have a decimal number of brothers. But your hand span, which is effectively a width or something that can be measured, would be continuous data. So whenever you see this type of thing, try and ask those questions. Can you have a decimal representation? Can it be measured? Yes. Is it numbers? Is it ordinal? Is it nominal? These type of thing. And it will take practice. There are questions in any textbook that will help you to do this. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have, tell your mates. I want to do as much as I can to help everyone out there to have make sense of the maths. Yeah. But otherwise, I'm going to call it a day. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Darren Mathsguru. It's been really good to see you. Click, like, subscribe, head to Mathsguru. And if not, hopefully I'll see you in another video. You take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.